Hi everyone, Ryan Ward. I'm the broker and the owner of Premier Atlanta Real Estate. And today I want to talk a little bit about something that I'm I've been beginning to hear a little bit more and more of over the past month or so from buyer's agents and my own brokerage here and in Facebook groups that I'm in and just kind of people talking about worries about if you're a buyer's agent and you're um, advising your client to offer $50,000, let's say, over the list price of the property so that they can get it, or if you're suggesting or you're recommending or or just giving them an idea that one additional item that they can do to maybe win the property would be to forego an inspection and then um, worry that something may come up later on and come back on you as the real estate agent for advising them to do something that in a different market we wouldn't do. Now, of course, um, most people understand that it's their responsibility and they've come to you and asked you and they've told you that they want to buy a house. So you're giving them the advice that you know is going to get them the property. Now, all that said, that if later on they come back and they find something terribly wrong with the home or if the market crashes and they lose 20% of their value and you told them to that they needed to pay $50,000 over the list price, you're the expert. And so there's a possibility of liability for you and your broker or your brokerage um, that some people are beginning to worry about. So there's been um, talk about this for a while. So the Georgia Association of Realtors decided they were gonna come together and come up with some options and some ways to help us here write better contracts um, and then also protect ourselves and one of the things that they did and it depends on the use case here is they've created a disclosure to buyers purchasing property in a seller's market or an exhibit that you can add to a buyer brokerage agreement that's the same form it's the disclosure to buyers purchasing property in a seller's market now hopefully you're having great conversations with your buyers ahead of time and explaining the conditions of the real estate market and explaining some of the things that um, they may need to do you may need to add a special stipulations into a contract for them to become the winning offer and then you're also advising them on the potential risks of paying above list price or removing an inspection contingency in any case the georgia association of realtors has given us forms now that we can use to help mitigate some of that liability or potentially mitigate some of that liability down the road so um, I'm going to go through the, the disclosure form and the special stipulations here. If you're at Premier Atlanta Real Estate, I just want you to know that we are going to recommend that you use these forms for all of your buyers and to use the special stipulations offered when appropriate. And if you have questions about that, please see me or see Wendy, the Director of Training and Development, um, if you have any questions. If you are with another brokerage, please make sure that you seek counsel from your broker on whether or not to use these forms. I'm going to post a link to these forms below so that you can look at them yourselves. But here is the disclosure to buyers purchasing a property in a seller's market. So buyer acknowledges that making an aggressive offer to purchase a property involves taking greater risks. These include without limitation, the following one, if buyer purchases a property, in as is condition without having an inspection performed, there's greater risk of buying a property with defects. You know this, but if you can get them to sign this, then you're gonna be a little bit better protected later. Two, if buyer is depositing large amounts of earnest money, this money is at risk if buyer breaches the contract or a dispute arises with the contract. Three, if the buyer contracts to purchase a property without a financing contingency, there's a greater risk of buyer being in breach of contract if buyer cannot obtain Financing. Four, if buyer buys a property sight unseen, buyer may not have a good understanding of the size, nature, and condition of the property or the area around the property. Five, if buyer offers to buy the property for an amount over the list price, the property may not appraise. Six, if buyer deletes an appraisal contingency from the agreement, buyer may pay in excess of the appraised price for the property and have to pay cash for the difference between the appraised price of the property and the sales price. These are just some of the risks buyer may encounter when making an aggressive offer. Now I'm hoping that all of you out there as buyer's agents are having a consultation with your buyers 
about all of these things. If you are or if you are not, this is a great way to document the process. So I'm going to encourage all, of, well, I'm going to recommend that all of our agents use this. Check with your broker if you're somewhere else. Also, what they've done is they've given us a number of special stipulations. And again, I'm going to post these below, so I'm not going to read everything on this form, but there are a number of them here. So let's get started. Buyer agrees to pay additional cash to seller at closing. This is in some senses similar to maybe what the option money could be in one case within the contract. Um, it'd be too detailed to get into all of those details in this video, but it's an, an, another way that you can incentivize the seller to take your offer. Next one is property not appraising is not a basis for the buyer to get the earnest money back. So if you're representing a buyer, you may see a, a, a listing agent make you a counter offer with this on their form um, just so that you know property not appraising is not a reason for the buyer to retain their earnest money after the due diligence period may be over. Uh, next one is buyer shall pay the cash difference between the sales price and the appraised price if the property does not appraise, add a little confidence for the seller. Buyer has the cash to pay the difference between the appraised price of the property and the sales price. Again, this is great because I would recommend um, providing proof of those funds along with a special stipulation to the seller to show them that you mean business and that you actually mean to pay the contract sales price and you're not trying to cheat the system by offering a sales price and then rushing to get an appraisal done and then forcing the seller to either reduce the price or let you out of the contract. Um, this is a great way to assure the seller that you really mean that you want to pay what you said you were going to pay in the offer. The next one is an escalation clause with a cap. Now, as a broker and as a team leader for a number of years, I've seen an escalation clause written poorly a number of times. I think this one is written really well. Um, next one is buyer purchasing the property site unseen, followed by buyer agrees to not purchase other property. And finally, staged earnest money, where you can give some earnest money at one point, and then later on you can add additional earnest money, maybe after the due diligence period or something like that. Again, these are um, stipulations that the Georgia Association of Realtors is seeing, hearing about, and um, finding problems in the way that agents are writing them. We should all know that we're really not supposed to be writing special stipulations without talking to our broker or to an attorney first. Um, it could be considered practicing law, and that's definitely a no-no for a licensed salesperson. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions about any of these things, feel free to reach out to me, leave a comment below, message me, call me. My information is right here in the video, video at the beginning and at the end of the video, and I hope this is... Uh, been in some ways helpful for you and in some ways I hope this allows you to have better conversations with your buyers about what's going on in the real estate market and by getting them to sign this form maybe they'll take this a little bit more serious so it may be something that helps pre-qualify your buyers for you if you can learn how to have conversations around these documents. So thanks for watching until next time I'm Ryan Ward I'm the broker of Premier Atlanta Real Estate thanks for watching.